My name is Len Kiryongi. I come from this place. This is my home. This is where I was brought up, but on the western side of the mountain, Mount Elgon. I'm working with a, an organization called the CIPDP. That's Chep Kitale, Indigenous Peoples Development Project. I came here as an intern. Then uh, I was given a role in a project that's mapping. We call it synchronization, getting all the data in one device. Okay, we have 24 mappers, and uh, of, the, of all the 24 matter, mappers, I'm supposed to get all their data in my desktop, then share it with other people. We can now come to reports. Like, it's indicating we have 2,397 observations. Like, we have until the area where this data was collected. We have uh, eight villages in Chepkitale. No, this one is in the other side, the western side. Mm. Now, any time you collect data, you have to indicate the area, the village where you collected your data. Then, uh, you see, it also has the, the date, the month, mm. the year, t until time mm. that you collected this data. Then with the coordinates of the place, that's why your location must be on every time you're collecting data. Mm. We want to get the the pictures that have been taken. These mm. are the pictures now. You'll come here in the category sector. Mm. Then now these are these are the categories that we are working with. But it's written in Ogiek mm -hmm. language. Yeah. It's been an interesting activity, mapping your own ancestral land. Like it's home. It's fun, getting to know some things that. Uh, something that you just told us stories. You told there's a certain cave that is around a certain area. Like it's just like stories. But when it comes to mapping, uh, you love to send some people to the field. They love to go and capture that place, write a history about it, have different pictures at different angles. So it's just fun. Um, Elijah Kitelo, uh, an Ogiek member of Ogiek community, Mount Elkon Forest. Uh, right away we are in uh, Kipkera Hill, a high point, and is one of the uh, areas that uh, the community members have got uh, significant importance of here. Uh, one of it is the uh, area around this hill, is uh, there is a lot of uh, herbs. Many people from our community come here to collect herbs, and uh, they go um, for, for different diseases and they they go and use it for to heal them. If you want to, to, to if you if you want to concentrate on only the medicinal sites, you come on the category side, you get its category, then just click only. You can just tap on it. Oh, I see. And it gives you the information. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's saying that this medicine is used to treat ulcers. Oh. This is the stinging needles. You can see it on the map. Another thing uh, here is uh, an area where is an high point where you can see uh, almost everywhere. It was uh, an area where our, our old generation used to come here and, uh, and, and, and view other places. They could monitor an enemy from far and they can raise alarm to our community members and uh, they, could, they could know how to, 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 how to defend themselves out of uh, raiders. It is always like a watching tower. Okay, we are supposed to come up with six maps. That's uh, the three D map, the human violations map, the historical injustices map. Then we have the distribution of resources. Then we have the spatial plan map. On the spatial plan, we are supposed to to have where where we graze our cattle and where people live. Then on the human violations, uh, when you move across this area, we have histories in different places. So I think you can get such stories from the elders, the struggles they went through while fighting for this land, and even uh, the wars that they had with the neighboring communities like the, like the Nandi, yeah, such stories. That one we are putting them under historical injustices and uh, human violations. Then on the distribution of resources, 
that uh, we'll have the caves, the rivers, the schools, hospitals, market centers, all of that, everything, the, the moorland side of the forest, the forest side. We have conflicts with the, some neighboring communities, like the Gishus from Uganda, who always come, steal our cattle. Now we are capturing those roots that they usually use while uh, going with our cattle. Also we have the trade routes, of which I'm not so sure of them because it was used a long time ago. Now, like right now, they're very small. Now, it's important because, uh, you know, this, this, is a, this is a trust land and uh, people live in different places. Like it, it's, it's very big, this area. Now we're supposed to, to do mapping. We want to know our resources, specific places where our resources are. Like when, when we have visitors, you, you're explaining to someone some things. You're supposed to, you, you, at the back of your mind, you should be knowing where that place is. You should be knowing the history of that place. We are planning to, to have a meeting with the elders. We want them to validate that data because we use the youths to go and uh, map. There's something that they don't know or maybe there's something that they missed. Now we're supposed to use the elders to validate data. If, if we have any missing data or they, we didn't give the right information, then we'll have the elders correcting them. I'm Andrew Simoto. I'm a mapper. When you are dealing with the mapping, you have a hub called Mapeo. And first of, first of all, you open Mapeo as you do the process. When Mapeo has been open, you leave for some minutes to search for accuracy, the way you see. After opening Mapeo, you went to the camera. As you look, you have seen the house on Mapeo. And when you have finished to capture the, let's the image of this house, you have the apps where the house will go. The, the, the village of the Tata Collect is where? It says, La Port, as you would say. Like right now in mapping, we are just uh, getting the pictures, and uh, you know you can be you can get an elder explaining to you some things while you are capturing some some maybe an an historical injustice site or the medicinal site or the story of a cave. Then you don't capture it right. So we were thinking of if we could get a, a way that we could express this in video form that we go to a place, then get an elder, explain it, then we save it as a clip, or record an audio, then it will be better. Like, you know, you can explain to me some things, but I cannot explain the same way to other people. They cannot understand me. When doing this mapping exercise, we are always told stories. We are just getting them as stories. So, I think it would be, be, it would be better if uh, we could get it in video form and save it, then maybe it can be used in the next generation. Like, uh, they can understand it better. You know, we are straining a lot right now. People, do, I cannot explain whatever I've been told with the terms they are using to explain it to other people. Maybe I'll go change the words, then so that maybe it can change the meaning. You get that? So I think it will be useful to the future generation. We have erosion of culture. Like, I cannot go explain to them something. They won't even believe me, but if they see a clip with an old man or an uh, old woman, maybe they can, they can understand it better and even trust the information. Yeah.